In today's On the Record, I'm joined by Latisa Wallace. Latisa is running in a heavily contested Democratic primary for Illinois' 17th Congressional District, recently vacated by Congresswoman Sherry Bustos. Latisa, thanks so much for being here today. Thank you so much, Matt, for having me. Great to see you. Great to see you as well. Well, you were formerly a state representative. You also ran alongside former gubernatorial candidate and Evanston mayor Daniel Biss for lieutenant governor. Walk me through, through how these two roles helped you in this race for Congress. Well, I um, thank you for the opportunity again to be able to share some of my experience. Um, having been a three-term legislator in the Illinois House of Representatives uh, means I have a track record on so many of the issues that people care about. I have a record of being able to get things done here in the state where um, health care is concerned, child care, living wages, many issues that are continuing to be at the core of what is being debated in Washington, D.C. right now. Right. Well, you passed over 40 bills as a state representative. Yes. What's maybe one to two pieces of legislation you passed that you're just really proud of? Well, I'm really proud of legislation um, that impacted our youth in care. I know we'll probably talk a little bit about that later on. Um, if we look at our schools, I helped to pass the Learning with Dignity Act, which has become actually a model of legislation across the country. It is a model or a piece of legislation that provides menstrual hygiene products in the restrooms um, in our schools so that students do not feel embarrassed, hence the title Learning with Dignity. Um, I also made sure that the child care assistance program in the state of Illinois is strengthened, expanding the um, income requirements, allowing course time to be covered for our college students who are also parents, and it also allows for families who are in other training programs to make sure their children are someplace safe and in an early learning environment um, while they pursue, while the parents pursue goals that can help the family um, move on to a better trajectory and have better outcomes. A major focus lately here in Illinois has been on DCFS and its current state here in Illinois. In Peoria, we just saw Navin Jones, he's an eight-year-old boy, die allegedly by the hands of his parents. Over in Bloomington, a seven-month-old girl, uh, Zaraz Walker, also died after DCFS had multiple visits with uh, the baby's mother there. What do you think needs to be done so cases like this don't continue happening when it comes to child care, DCFS, all that regard? Well, you know, our state, unfortunately, is one of the states nationally that had an increase of um, youth in care over the last couple of years. And one of the very first pieces, actually the first piece of legislation I passed in the Illinois House was the Foster Children's Bill of Rights. It details for foster parents everything that their youth have a right to, including um, the right to approach the in inspector general about cases or about their own concerns. In the two cases you just mentioned, I am heartbroken that any child would lose their life while the state of Illinois is in effect their parent. And we should be providing a care that is over and above the care that we said their biological parents could not provide. So I hope that we continue to strengthen um, the, the budget for DCFS. I hope we're making sure that our case managers and those working in that field have the resources they need to be able to be effective. But definitely we cannot continue to the, ignore the over 16,000 youth who are in the care of the state of Illinois. Well, Latisa Wallace, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Of course. And this whole interview will be on our website. That's ciproud.com. And you can hear more from Latisa Wallace tomorrow on WMBD This Morning.